dear listeners, to episode twenty-eight of the Empty Rooms of Gorsky Manor. Intrigue is in the air. Tale seven: Looking for the things in the corners of Gorsky Manor, or are they now looking for us? What a time was had by all! At the first celebration within the manor for ages, for centuries, great pleasure rang through every hall, every nook, every empty room. Yet things that had been sleeping now stirred, things that are better left there in forgotten corners. And hidden places, things that now yawned and awakened, such things that had once walked these floors, but may not be wanted to walk these floors again. Harry, Feathers, Simon, and I all slumbered in front of the now smoldering fireplace in Harry's sitting room. My dear companions. So peacefully exhausted from the grandest ball this Hallow's Eve, one forever to be remembered. I awoke with a start as I felt something scurry past me, brushing gently against my leg, just enough to awaken me. There is always something afoot in the manor. Yet this sensation made the hairs on my arms and the back of my neck stand straight up. A strong shiver ran down my spine. I sat up and tried to peer deeply into the shadows, but my eyes refused to clear, still sleepily unfocused. I stopped fighting the blur and let my gaze soften, watching for any hint of movements. I thought I heard a scratch there, then again on the other side of the room, then by the door, but my eyes could detect nothing. Oh well, I thought, it's always something here in the manor. That did not make it necessarily bad. Though after my near escape last night from the uninvited guest, I felt very weary and watchful. I walked to the window, not wanting to wake the others just yet. The sun was setting; we had slept the whole day away, which is fine, as the manor awakens once the hour of twilight arrives. The thought crossed my mind: Who walks these halls during the day? So far, I haven't seen much of the manner of the day. I made note of this: something worth while to explore in the future. I could see a sliver of new moon in the sky. I thought of Shirley, the crescent moon. She was such a character to spend time with. But she, the waxing crescent moon, had to return to the sky as her time begins tomorrow. I must remember to look up to her tomorrow and send a friendly hello. So, who are you, new moon? What be your name? Caution! Caution! She whispered with concern. <laughs> I turned in shock to see Harry jump out of his wingback chair. What? 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 Harry yelled, rushing to Simon's side, as I did. Simon pointed to a stool on the other side of the fireplace, and there upon it lay Feathers, her head limp over the edge of the stool, as numerous little swords were stuck within her poor body. I gave a cry. Oh no! What happened? I just saw her a minute ago, and she was fine, sleeping quietly. Harry rushed to her side. And touched her head with love and concern. 
He began to pull each sword from her motionless body. I couldn't help but count them. One, two, three, four. Who would do this? I questioned tears catching in my throat. With the removal of each sword, though life seemed to return to her. At five, she gave a twitch. Six, and seven, she took a deep breath. Eight, nine, she moved her legs and flapped her wings. As the last sword, number ten, she opened her eyes and gave the most sorrowful call. <coughs> She got to her feet shakily and hopped into Harry's waiting arms. He soothed her and smoothed her feathers to comfort her. I did notice through all of this, thankfully, there had been no blood. I came next to them to gently stroke her forehead. Simon, too, dried the tears he had shed and came and touched her leg gently with concern. He did have a great affection for her, even though he denies it. Harry passed feathers to me to hold and snuggle while he took up the small swords to look intently at them. Magic, Harry hissed as he considered what he saw. He whispered a few words over the swords, and they crumbled into nothingness. Poppets, poppets he said quietly, glancing around the room quickly. Not again. Simon sighed. Feathers snuggled deeper into my warm arms. Harry sat down with resignation. They were extremely hard to remove last time. Where there is one There be very, very many. He reminisced about his first encounter with these spirits. What are poppets? I asked with great dread. What could do this heinous act? Little poppet eyes of gold Staring through your butt Can you see what's to behold Down these empty halls Down these empty halls Though your smile be big and bold Teeth so white, lips so cold Do you hear the story? Oh. 
Puppets for when to strike Puppets know it's them she seeks Down these empty halls Down these empty halls Creepy crawly hair of yarns flowing like a web of charms in the cracks where no one goes down these empty walls down these empty walls see you it's too late staring through heating great scratching tapping to be puppets they have many magic of their own, which they do not use wisely or nicely, Harry said out loud as he considered what is to be done. It was so long ago when they were finally put to sleep. That didn't sound good. You killed them, I said with disbelief. Oh, no, my dear. This is not that kind of a manner. Harry said sharply. We tried so long ago to help them. They can be good company when they are happy. But they can't seem to stay happy for long. Then the trouble starts. I thought puppets were created mostly for good, to assist, to heal, to protect, I offered. I have only had the pleasure of knowing one puppet, one I created with the appearance and intention of helping me with more energy. But it just sits there on the shelf. I never felt anything from it, especially energy. Very disappointing. Did you waken it? Harry pointed out and asked. Well, no, I said. Should I have? Well, definitely. A strong bond is needed to coax them into friendship. But once you do, it cannot be broken. Some find this attachment too much to bear. When they truly care and actually love you, their face will transform, taking on the features of its master. Harry said, sharing this ancient knowledge. The group we found within the manor did not find themselves attached to any person, any one of their liking. This we do not want again. They feel us an opponent and do monstrous mischief to break away. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move high on a shelf. Harry, Harry, there's something up there, I whispered, pointing to the movement of things on that shelf being shuffled and pushed around. Harry quickly grabbed a broom and handed me a small cauldron. He motioned me to follow him, and I understood we were going to catch one puppet. Harry slowly levitated up to the shelf. You can imagine my shock to see this, as I do forget he is 
actually a ghost. He pointed for me to stand below, which I did, holding the cauldron in my outstretched hands, ready to take action. Then, in a burst, Harry brushed the things from the shelf, which all tumbled down towards me. I caught as many of the items as I could, not sure if they included the poppet. I held the cauldron out to Harry to take, me not wanting to look inside alone. Harry quickly placed the cauldron on a table and slowly began to take things out of it. A feather fan, bag of something, seashells, twisted root, small book, ball of thread, old half-burned candle. I didn't think that many things fell down, but where is the poppet? Out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement, the root was slowly crawling away. Harry, the root, I yelled. He reached very quickly with ghostly speed and then stood there holding a wiggly root. Could that be a poppet? It gave out a bone-chilling scream. I covered my ears in fright, but it just kept screaming. Cease your yowling, poppet. Harry said sternly, giving his captor a rough shake. The poppet turned down his volume a little bit, but increased his struggling. Harry had it by the neck and seemed to squeeze tighter, causing the scream to sound more like choking. Harry, don't hurt him, I shouted. Immediately, the poppet stopped screaming and struggling and just hung there limp, looking intently at me. This felt somewhat unnerving. I was able to get a better look at it, though. It still looked like a large root, but I could see it had two tiny eyes of golden beads, a face that reminded me of a carved gourd of pagan tradition a face I do feel drawn to in a strange way. The poppet smiled at that thought, which made me jerk back with shock. Can it read my mind, too? Then it winked. I guess so. Harry had a concerned look on his face. My dear, do not get friendly. You do not know what you may be getting involved with. He warned me. Harry relaxed his grip somewhat, and instantly the poppet took advantage and tried to kick him. I heard and I saw a little bell attached to what must be its feet. Bells still holding firm, I see, poppet, Harry said to it, giving it another shake. A way to know they are near, before they ambush. Harry explained to us what the bells were. Well, what's your name? I asked it. Oh, no, don't ask its name. Harry reprimanded me. Never, never ask its name. The poppet smiled again at me with confidence, showing two small fangs that reminded me of the recent near miss with the vampire. Tuck, it said proudly. I am Tuck, Mary Mistress. Set me free. In your debt, I will forever be. Oh, my dear, now you did it. Harry said, handing me the poppet. I stepped backwards, shaking my hands and head. Oh, no, 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 I shouted. But the poppet held out its arms to me, wanting me to take it. I didn't know what to say or do. What am I supposed to do with it? I asked Harry in major panic. It be for you to decide. 
Harry said with disgust in his voice, and with that he released the poppet, who immediately ran to me and attached itself to my left arm, hiding its face behind me away from Harry. I felt I would scream, but then I felt how the little fellow was shivering. My heart couldn't help but go out to it. Remember... What it did to feathers, Harry warned. Oh, yes, that did happen. So very, very bad. I could feel the poppet shake even more strongly. Tuck, why? I asked, my sadness and disappointment very evident. Warning is just what it be, sent by tick. Tuck offered reluctantly. Meant to scare, no harm to she. Just a little trick it be. Not tick. I remember him well, Harry said with disbelief, looking to feathers still in my arms. He is the worst, as you can see from this first little trick. Trick? Did not do this. It was Tick, Tuck said with concern. How many of you have awakened? Harry asked Tuck, giving him a hard pinch on his foot, causing Tuck to kick his feet, ringing the bells. Oh, we, we be more than three, he hissed at Harry and began to sing a long list. Well, there is Tick and Trick. And wick and flick, and then below there's brick and chick. Within the walls there's ick and nick and schnick and flick and little stick. Do not forget that monster Vic and yick and zick and pick. And then there's me. I'm Tuck. Harry did not look impressed, yet. I felt compassion for them and patted Tuck on his shoulder in friendship. He smiled brightly at me. Did you do that terrible thing to feathers? I asked him, trying to reconcile in my heart my growing affection for him. He lowered his eyes and with true regret said, Vic was he. It was his task. He has a very mean streak in him. It was just magic, not swords. You see, you saw, Athams, they be. I know Athams, magical tools to create boundaries and direct energies. I can understand the meaning, yet ten, a very strong message from Poppets yet it sounds like they are intruders in the manor. Did you invite the vampire into the manor? I asked, looking firmly into Tuck's eyes. Oh, no, 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 it was not us, though he was a beautiful creature, a much lovely smile. Tuck said, smiling and showing his two fangs. We awoke. But that was not our doing. A ritual pulled us from out of our slumber. I noticed he no longer was speaking in rhymes. With that comment, we began to hear shuffling and rustling noises come from everywhere in the room. One by one, puppets came out of their hiding slowly moving into a tight, protective group by the fireplace, staying away from Harry. I was a little shocked at their numbers. Tuck had named maybe fourteen, fifteen puppets, but this looked like many more. I sat down on my ladder-back chair. Harry moved to his wing-back chair with Feathers and Simon, and the puppets all sat down on the floor in front of us. I could see distrust in Harry's face. 
I don't think his previous encounters with the puppets were anything of this kind of a connection to them in the past. They all look like children waiting for a story to be told. What do you seek? Harry asked with force. A home, one puppet said. Remembrance, another said. A task, he! Yet another called. Companionship, spying, purpose, seeking, sharing, watching, Sneaking, sneaking, very eye opening what they all shared. Let me read you in the runes I offered. This always gave me assistance at these times of uncertainty. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, they yes, all jump yes. together. Very well, my dear. Please do share. Harry agreed begrudgingly. Tuck still remained with me, clinging tightly to my arm, resting his face against my shoulder, looking up at me doe-eyed with awe and affection. All their little gold eyes looked at me, it was yet an unsettling strange sight to see, but I was glad they seemed friendly. Okay, Poppet. P-O-P-P-E-T. P is for Perthro, the rune of mysteries, magics, great magics, mixing in the cauldron of alchemy. Yes, o yes. is for the rune Othala. Our home, our manor. You yearn to belong here too. Yes. P. Again, Perthro. Puzzles, finding and solving of these mysteries. Yes. yes. And again, a third P for Perthro. The love of the hunt. A group of little spies and watchers. Yes. E yes. is for Awas. Work together with respect, with trust, and T is for Tiwas, deep protections, holding of the truth. They all clapped and cheered and shouted. Yes, 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 that is what we want. Yes, 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 yes. yes. A larger puppet had stood up. May we share our tale? My name is Tick. I lead. I looked to Harry for his agreement. He nodded reluctantly. I looked at him and wondered what is going on with him. He is being very unpleasant. Yet I do know they were not kind in the past. Please do, Harry said with no emotion. Talk theater, sir. Tick said with a bow. That means thank you in Icelandic, O oh, Norse. Then Tick began his tale. We were born in an ancient cave deep in the north. Our master and creator, an ancient wyvern of ice. Within his cave he had lived years centuries, eons, yet his time was not endless. As his last years grew near, he felt loneliness, yearning for companions. We are those he created, from bits of bone and twig, clay and threads that he had unearthed in the roots found and collected from the digging of the tunnels that brought the elements of water and air into his domain. Our hearts he also had found, 
frozen and tangled in the darkness. He warmed us and rejoiced when each and every heart began to beat. A great treasure he had amassed and cherished, that which contained golden beads, which he shared freely with us, giving a sight. He freed us and shared his magical breath, bringing us fully to life. For many years we lived in joy and peace. His knowledge he shared with us, so much he knew. And then the fated day arrived. We could not waken him. We grieved and grieved. Our hearts grew cold once again. Yet one lonely day, a warm breeze awoke our fitful rest. A great flood rushed through the tunnels, washing away all the things of our master, washing away his resting bones. We all took shelter in several cauldrons and found ourselves on a heaving great rolling sea. We cried and cried, making the sea grow deeper, making the waves crash with fury of our regrets and sadness. A large whirlpool eventually caught us, pulling us down and down as we clung in the safety of our cauldrons. When we resurfaced, here we were in the cellars of this manor. The manor is very welcoming to those that are lost and filled with sadness, I shared. He bowed his head and softly said, Not then, not for us. I looked to Harry for understanding. He didn't seem taken by this emotional tale. A most lovely tale you have told. Quite emotional. Meant for child and women folk. I was shocked by this response and looked with concern at him. Tick sat back down and they all looked at us, waiting for their fated sentence the repeat of what must have happened here so long ago. The manor now welcomes all. My heart is open. Kindness, niceness are to be held up high. Those that forsake our kindness remain no longer Hoppet Vic, thy action is unacceptable. Thy must prove thee worthy. Thee is banished for a time. Be gone. And without a chance to plead for his reasons, Vic disappeared for what he had done to Feathers. Harry stood up quickly, bowed to us all, and walked to the closed door and straight through it. We all sat there in stunned silence. What has just happened? Feathers whispered, Harry cannot forgive. Mistress, your task has been set. Help these puppets use their magics in the highest good of others. And themselves, their path awaits along the hallway of telling. Blessings and hugs, dear listener.
eyes of gold staring 